It's going to go off, and that's the time allotted for each person, so we have enough time to hear from everybody on every issue. Thank you. Up first, Peter Tim, followed by Dorothy Gay. I don't know if this is an honor or not to be the first one called, but I will take advantage of it anyway. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I attended the media workshop you had on what we're going to do about our lousy roads and how we're going to spend $80 million that we're, I guess, we're going to borrow in order to do it. <coughs> Realize that is payback on that is over $4 million a year. This city's broke. You don't have four million dollars a year to pay back. I know you're going to tell me that oh, it's going to improve. People are going to move in. They can't wait to move into Lake Worth and then uh, buy these uh, townhouses that are sitting there on uh, Federal Highway, Tenth Avenue North, Sixth Avenue South. They've been up for about four or five years now. They haven't been sold yet. So I guess they'll be coming in to buy those places. I don't know where your realization that you could <coughs> contemplate spending this kind of money that you don't have. And see no reason of where you're going to get it from. Oh, people are going to move in. Oh, they're going to be so happy with Lake Worth, they can't wait to buy. Huh? Yeah. They're going to move into the poorest city in the county. I don't think so. <coughs> I don't think that is a drawing card to get people to move into our city. I don't know what it is. But I know it ain't that. So if you could please reconsider and count your pennies before you go off on these wild goose chases of uh, doing everything all at the same time and money be damned. The only one that can seem to get away with that is the federal government. Uh, you ain't that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Dorothy Gay followed by Linda Roman. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. I am Dorothy Gay, 1314 South B Street. <clears throat> I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Maxwell as I attempted to work on this high uh, FPL bill that's steady coming, and I'm trying to work on it to get down the water bill and whatever, and ever also talking with you. Um, I thank you so much for attempting to assist me. Also, I'd like to applaud one or two individuals that works for the city of Lake Worth, where you don't get those uh, praises and, and comments that often. However, when I talk to William Waters, I've had uh, tremendous assistance uh, from him uh, in trying to work on and eliminate some situations that come up with, with the city and the property. Uh, also, after dealing with Mr. Waters, uh, I've also encountered talking with Luis Martinez, which has also <coughs> been uh, quite supportive in the issues that were faced, that are facing me at this time. So I want to applaud those individuals who have assisted me and hopefully we can continue because my voice still will be the electricity and any other parts that would need to be lowered since he, uh, you worked on trying to see was that still in effect for me uh, that we can still work on lowering it as long as we can get it as lowered. Uh, depending on who, what, or whatever in the city of Lake Worth, I think that would be really advantage for the city that when someone is given the opportunity to move in here, that they know they can survive this uh, this bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. King. Linda Roman, followed by Sarah Winters. Uh, if, if it's okay with you, Sarah Winters and I are going to do a joint presentation. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Vanna, show the. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and um, thank you for allowing us to tell us um, tell you about our Art at the Ego event. Thank you, Commissioner Zarity, for mentioning it and for 
Ms. Sharon Rosa for all your support. We're having our second annual Art of the Ego event on December 7th. Uh, we had a terrific time last year. The event is open from 2 to 7 p.m. We have 17 local artists whose work will be for sale for um, holiday gifts. We have a wine and small bites reception. The, um, we have music. We have a wonderful raffle. A lot of the downtown merchants have been very generous in donating raffle prizes to us. And um, we, the proceeds will uh, benefit um, Mayo Grove Neighborhood Association, but also Lake Worth Children's <coughs> Charities. And um, to purchase tickets, it's free, but to purchase tickets to the Wine and Small Bites reception, um, please go to uh, www.mangogroves.org or www.artattheeco.com. Um, for more information, you can get in touch with uh, myself or any of the Mango Groves uh, folks. And I think we are the first event in Lake Worth ever to have our very own movie trailer. It's a one-minute movie trailer, and it was created by our very own Sarah Winters. And we would like to show it to Mayor Triolo, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Do we want to peek? Your heart's very sick, then. I'm sorry, it's at the Eco Center, and John Zerdy is going to be giving um, tours of, these, of the um, center, which is our green building, as he is the architect. We're not getting the service. Oh, it's, it's optimized. Oh, I said, yes, excellently. Oh, it's going to be a well, <laughs> <laughs> it sounded good. I was being optimistic. <laughs> you can uh, watch the trailer. We'll send you copies. Oh, please do. Yeah, so we can share it. No, I love it if we could share it with them. Sorry about that. Don't touch that button. <laughs> Me and electronics. <laughs> okay, up next, Teresa Miller, followed by Loretta Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner has already pretty well covered it, so I'll just give the cliff note version. First of all, I'm up here speaking because we flipped a coin. Roger Hendricks and I here is the chairperson of Cottages of Lake Worth. I got the side that says get up and speak. So here I am. Uh, background on this, Roger's from out of town. Sometimes you need that person to look around and say what is needed here. He saw over a thousand cottages, some fixed up, some in kind of rock condition. Started thinking about places like Savannah and Key West that were in the same condition once. They took what they had to sell, so to speak, which was those great structures and turned it into a tourist destination and a very, very desirable piece of property to live in. What can we do? Roger decided to bring together people from everywhere in Lake Forest. He and I are both in Parrot Cove, but this is not a Parrot Cove project. It's a Lake Worth project. What we hope to do is find cottages throughout the community, create a map via GPS, printed version, promoted via the media, be it local, state, national, hopefully international. Bring the tourists in and find people who are interested in those little cottages, usually built prior to the war. Two bedrooms, one bath, it might be a starter home, it might be a retiree home. And some of the things that we are finding is, are happening from this. Robert Waples with Paint Your Heart Out is going to get involved. We're going to be approaching some of the cottage owners to find out if they'd like their properties fixed up. We're going to be approaching paint companies, try to take a whole block, paint all the cottages on the block, bring people into our community, and hopefully make it a greater place to live. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I was going to talk about the opening of Bradley's, which was stupendous. And then I was going to talk about the cottages, which sounds great to me. But when I heard that I could talk about something on the consent agenda, now I want to talk about the broker for leasing out the casino. What are they going to lease out at the casino? 
the one room you have left on the second floor, I would like to have you have a broker look at, is it more profitable to you to rent it out to a restaurant? Or is it more profitable to you to fix it up yourself and rent it out for conferences? And any broker worth a damn can do that. Uh, it's all a matter of, of, of money. I really think myself, being in Lake Worth for 27 years, it is more important for the city to make um, conferences available to small regional conferences up and down the east coast of Florida. And I don't care that we don't have a hotel. I'd love to have a hotel, but we don't have one. But you can go to any hotel over there on South Ocean Boulevard and make out a deal that you can offer to the conference vendor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we also have uh, one more that was presented by Mango Groves. The trailer Sarah Winter, Winter, age 10, created will be posted on www.artdazzlelakeworth.com right after this meeting. Again, again the www.artdazzlelakeworth.com. One more card. This last chance. Okay, Carolyn Rappaport. Yeah, I'm a new resident. I have been here for quite a year. Um, I moved to Florida from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I lived in Boca for six months and looked around and I picked Lake Worth. Um, I see its bumps and lumps, but there's something special about it and I like it. However, every morning when I go to work, I realize it gets very depressing driving through the streets and seeing the I'm carrying the code violations, and one of the reasons I'm here are my complaints have been put in the paper in an article a week ago, and somebody said, you've got to read this. And so I said, I, I just came from work, so I'm sorry if I'm a little. But um, I don't understand how the grass can be this tall. It should be a fire violation, if nothing else. I talked to two code officers last week. I come off of 95 at at 6, um, and turn over on A Street and drive into a flock of chickens. I call them my back <laughs> and, and I was told we can't get the Humane Society. I said, forget it. If it's a code violation, you send a letter, you find them, and I would suggest you just don't find people. You also make them work the same amount of money off cutting grass and cleaning yards for anybody that are violating codes. And when I have the time, and you have the time, I've done this before in another city, and we've gotten out lawyers from Canada own half the buildings in Erie, Pennsylvania. And they were abandoned. And um, I got people to post their names, addresses, and phone numbers. Most of them were attorneys. And I had a, a parish priest call me and said, you're Polish, but you're going to Italian Day because we got six houses donated to my parish and my Italian bricklayers and construction that are going to do this for poor people. So things can be done. And right now, it's depressing just to drive out and look at what's there. we got to do something. And what are your code officers doing? I'd like to know why in two weeks my attack chickens have not been taken off the street. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Ms. Rappaport, before you leave, I just want to thank you. We welcome you as a, as a new neighbor here in our beautiful city with its many code violations. Yeah. We're, we're, we're very well aware of them, and in fact, we're, uh, we're in flux. If you read that article, then you know oh, you've talked to article. people. I loved it. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're dealing with those situations. In fact, we created over 20 new ordinances to, uh, to address these situations, but right now we've got to, to find the appropriate situation to... I, I'll volunteer as a coach. We're gonna volunteer. we're gonna call you up. We got your number now, lady. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome. Thank you. Um, anyone? Oh, I'll let you guys go. Uh, anyone? Vice Mayor. Thank you. I wish you had a chicken ordinance. Just <laughs> chicken, <laughs> along with the cat. <laughs> Just Mr. Zach. Yeah, exactly. Chickens and cats. Chickens and cats. Um, want to kind of speak to Mr. Tim's comments. Um, you know, again. This, this concept of Lake Worth 2020 is probably going to be the biggest um, 
will, will prove to be the biggest undertaking the city has probably ever um, gone after in its existence. And it's unfortunate that we had to be in this position to, to, to have to launch something like this. But as we spoke uh, one or two meetings ago, I think it's important that we not get carried away here with throwing up numbers. Mr. Tim says it's 80 million, this person says it's 150 million, this person says it's 60 million. So everybody's got a different vision of what this is gonna cost. But in reality, I don't think we know what it's gonna cost yet because we're still working through you know, what the, the needs assessment is and making sure that we understand all that is needed so we can properly, um, what's the word we're looking for? Organize, if you will, the projects, the potential projects. You know, the last thing we want to do is have folks running through the city streets with their hair on fire saying that, you know, we need $150 million that we don't have, and that we all start developing this defeatist type of uh, approach, though we can't do that because we don't have $150 million. <coughs> the reality of it is we cannot continue to do the same thing that we've been doing in the past and expect a different result. And that's really what I think the whole Lake Worth 2020 initiative is designed to do, is to take us on a different path. And I, I would just hope that we can come up, again, it goes back to messaging. Let's start making sure our messaging is correct, it's consistent, mm -hmm. and we don't get carried away and throwing out numbers that are absolutely meaningless at this point until we have all everything you know, sorted out. Yeah, I take you back with that just because I want to address that. You're the mayor, go ahead. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just <laughs> trying to be courious too. <laughs> you don't have to try, you're doing a good job. All right, thank you. Um, I just want to, because I, I wanted to address the same issue too. I think I stated over and over again when we had our discussions in the past that these are discussions. This is the opening of a dialogue right now to have discussions about it. The most important thing that we've been doing here in the last couple of years is assessing what our situation is. And it hasn't been pretty. We've seen a lot of things over the last couple of years. We've seen the neglect. We've seen mistakes. We've had to fund things, deal with lawsuits. I mean, we are trying to do a cleanup of sorts, of, of, of being realistic. I mean, when I gave my State of the City address last year, it wasn't a fun time to talk about what the real statistics were. But if we're going to get better, we have to be truthful about who we are. And that's a conversation that, and I, I agree with you, Vice Mayor, and I said it over and over again. This is the opening of a discussion, and I knew it was going to get, oh, the numbers were thrown out or whatever. We can't afford to do this wrong, Vice Mayor. You've said that before. We get one chance to do this right. And we don't know, I've used the analogy before, in my house, I open up a wall, and I call three people. I call a plumber, an electrician, and an exorcist to deal with whatever, whatever's going on inside my wall, because I know it's going to be something. And because it's an old house built in the 1920s, but you just never know. And that's sort of like what we're going through here. And you know, we say, oh, the roads were really bad here. Well, what about on the roads that are supposedly good? How bad are those roads? You know, are we are we really examining every single issue? We have to look at what we've got, take stock of what we own, own up to what we've done wrong, and right the ship, right the wrongs. And I don't think this it's not going to happen overnight because I think there's way too many things that are going on about it, but everybody should not be concerned with, everyone's going to have a decision. You're all stakeholders in this decision. You're all going to have a, a, a voice in this project. And we're going to have to decide and pick and choose what it is that we need to do and we can do, or what we can, what we can you know, get in grants, or what we can get in, you know, there's going to be so many choices of financing and finding, and, 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 and maybe we'll get lucky with the state on some, of, on some projects as they're focusing on infrastructure. We're going to go to battle in every way that we possibly can here. This is not a done deal. It's not set. So just because it was in a presentation by our staff members, that not, does not mean it's over and that's our only choice. Here's what it is and we're done. Do this, do that, and that's it. No. It's a conversation, folks. And this is the start of the conversation. And it's not about, there's no fix anything. I think we're going to find out more things about whatever. Because Lord knows, we again, we opened that wall. Who knows what's going on? But let's be honest and let's be truthful and let's find out what we're really dealing here with. And then let's have the conversation and then let's all put our input in for it. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves here, okay? This is something we have to do. It's our job to do these things. Let me, let me finish up on yeah, that. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. that. That's quite all right. Thank you. You know, and, and, and the term discussion is, I think, appropriate. Madam Mayor, thank you for that. It is a discussion. Uh, everybody in the committee is going to have an opportunity to weigh in on that discussion. 
But remember this, at the end of that discussion, wherever that discussion takes us, whatever that discussion yields in terms of projects or the magnitude of those projects or the value of those projects, we need to understand one very important thing. We are going to be in no different situation than any other agency or any other municipality has been in the past when it comes to taking on a project of that size. Most organizations do not have the funding in place to undertake those type of initiatives. They don't have them in place or they, everybody be doing them. I mean, you hear it every single day on the national news, you talk about the infrastructure on a nationwide basis. You know, the, the infrastructure in this country has been neglected for the last 50 or 60 years. You know, the problem is, individually and collectively, we're going to have to find a way. You know, Lake Worth, the state of Florida, the United States, is going to have to find a way to build this infrastructure. The reality of it is, whatever we yield in terms of our discussion, whatever that looks like, it is going to take years for us to see that project or those projects come to fruition. And even if we had the funding in place on day one, it wouldn't make any difference because it's still going to take us years to make that project or those projects come to fruition. So the point is, we have to plan it, we have to schedule it, we have to be out there aggressively looking for grants, putting money aside, doing the best we can to raise our tax base, do all the things we're supposed to be doing as, as, as a government to, to put this together, because that's our responsibility. That's what we're elected to do. That's why we're here. We're here to represent the community and get these things done. We're not here to identify a problem and say, well, sorry, we can't do it, so we'll move on to another topic. That's what we've done in the past. That's what he, we have historically done in the past. And in the, in the void that was created, we, went, we gravitated to shiny objects because they felt good. So we want to get away from that. So I just want to make sure that we're all on the same board, on the same page on that matter there. Thank you. Commissioner McBoy. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm glad to hear. Uh, I'm glad to hear the mayor speaking of of a discussion because um, I think some of the initial presentations did come across a little bit as this is what we're going to do and this is what the price tag is and and admittedly there were several different sort of scenarios laid out as to how expensive and how much you do but. Um, I think it's it's very important in that discussion. I, I completely agree. It needs to be a community discussion because what we're talking about is it's on the order of multiple tens of millions of dollars. And as Commissioner Maxwell rightly points out, nobody has that money. You borrow it. But when you borrow it, you're taking on an obligation for a long time. And there are assumptions that go with that that you will in fact be in a position or future folks in Lake Worth will be in a position to pay that. And that they will agree, and we all agree, to have the increases in what amounts to taxes and that we think it's a good return. Um, that needs to be a very clear discussion. And I think a piece of it that, that I have not necessarily seen quite as much as I'd like to see, we have to be very careful about what we promise with it. I think um, several of us in the here Mr. Tim has expressed, and, and John Rinaldi has expressed, and I happen to agree with both of them, that the claim that if we fix the roads, property values will go up at, at a level that will basically pay that interest. I, I think that's a claim. I th I'm very skeptical of it. And I would think that as citizens, we deserve to see some serious, careful, thoughtful studies that show that that will, in fact, you know, it's worked in other communities and, and uh, and then, as I mentioned in my um, what do we call it? commission liaison reports, um, communities up and down South Florida are looking at those maps that National Geographic puts out of what sea level rise is likely to look like. And it's looking more and more likely all the time. Before we invest a lot of money and before we make assumptions about what property values will do here, we need to be really carefully thinking about that context because that can have a very big effect on, on all of that, especially as insurers start changing whether they want to insure here. That totally changes the mortgage market. Um. Okay, I'll give my two cents. Um, it was a workshop, one of many workshops, and it's our job to identify the problems and bring it to the commission, um, bring it to the people and get them. It, it's, just the beginning. Uh, there's some preliminary numbers, Mr. Tim. Um, again, it'll eventually go to a vote. 
um, whatever form it looks like. But it's our job to identify the problems, and we have a lot of problems in infrastructure that have been neglected for a long, long time. So we need to address it because come October, this time next year, everyone will be up at this dais complaining about the potholes and the big wet problems that they had when rainy seasons come again because we will be in the same situation as we were in this year. Rainy season comes, potholes come, we will be in the same situation. Um, Dorothy Gay, I want to thank you for getting up and, and um, saying thank you to certain people. Um, this commission has lowered your utility bill um, year after year. This year we've lowered it by another 4.5%. We've made a commitment to be in parity within five years to FPNL. And if you haven't heard, FPNL raised their rate this year by 5%, so they're actually helping us do that. So we have made a commitment to the people that uh, we will continue looking at lowering your utility bill. Um, that, that's a commitment that you have from us. Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, I also had an opportunity this, this week here to meet with Lewis and, uh, and also with William. Uh, they are doing a really good job. They're doing a lot with limited resources, human resources, that is. And um, I, I think that I've heard different feedback. I, I'm, in, I'm, in the, uh, I'm an architect and a contractor. So I'm in the industry where I will hear from people that have to deal with these folks. And the feedback is, is much, much better. I think the attitude that uh, Mr. Martinez has is a good one to promote service. It's very much uh, growing that kind of a, of a attitude within the department. So I think you'll find that that whole thing changing about how, how difficult it is to do things here in Lake Worth, especially if you're going to be picking up one of those little cottages and fixing them up. <laughs> um, so, um, and, and I guess also in that regard, you know, we've, we've uh, still been working with some folks uh, from the University of Florida, as well as folks from the Treasure Coast. We're getting more and more research done. Uh, we're not quite ready yet to pull all of that out and bring it to um, Commissioner Boy to, to folks also interested in that relationship. But um, we know that there is a correlation there between the uh, value of property and the status of your infrastructure. You can ask real estate people from a I guess a qualitative standpoint when they drive by and they come to the different properties and they, they have to dodge the potholes or try to avoid going down streets that have certain things going on and don't go where there's big puddles and oh let's not go down this street and that street. They do the securitist routine. So yes it does. It totally does affect um, the property values. It's, it's also impression. So we, we're going to be bringing that this important information that you bring out, and I, and I think it is important. Um, and, and I guess the question also about so, you know, what are you happy with the way things are? You want it to keep going the way it's been going? Is that is that okay? Of course, that's not the answer. What what would be the cost?